Hello there, this is Caesar on Toast, and you're watching episode 7 of my All the Mods 3 series. Um, I've moved house since the last time I recorded, so if it sounds a little different, that's because I'm in a brand new place. Um, I've been doing, so I haven't had a chance to record yet because I've been uh, moving between cities and all that. Um, and uh, thank you for all the comments in the meantime. I've uh, been getting a lot of support on the series, which is great to see, and we've just passed 400 subscribers, which is a really good milestone for me. So we'll see how long it takes to get to 500 from here. Um, as you can see, I've expanded the main part of the base uh, quite a bit. Uh, we've moved our immersive engineering coke oven and blast furnace into a little side bit here, added a, uh, a enchantment station, and I did a little bit of enchanting, so now we've got protection four and breaking three diamond leggings, and a protection four respiration three diamond helmet. We'll hopefully get uh, unbreaking on that too eventually. Um, what else have I done? So I've cleared out a little bit of space under here because we are uh, kind of running out of places to expand to here. Um, on this side, we've hit like, um, we're almost at ground level because the hill is sloping down this way. And then on this side, I thought I'd just keep the dimensions of the room roughly symmetrical. Like it's not a symmetrical room with all the machines we've built into the sides, um, but that's fine. Uh, I started um, using this mod called X-Tones, or Stones, or something like that, I'm not sure on the pronunciation, but it's a really cool one um, that I think everyone who's playing this should check out. Um, basically I was sick of using the concrete because you had to hydrate it and there was a lot of crafting involved, um, but these are the most customizable um, blocks you can use for decoration. I've got them here on the sides, we've got Zones, we've got Azur, we've got Ism. Uh, the stuff in the ceiling used to be the concrete, but now it's this ism. And basically, when you have the block on your hotbar, it says mist 10 there. If I hold shift and then use my mouse scroll wheel, I can change between all these colors. And um, so if you have a base with a highlight color, like I've got the blue, um, you can just switch between these really easily. Um, so I kind of want to keep with the blues though, so that's the theme of the base. And uh, yeah, there's lots of different ones. So this Azur, all the different uh, ones are blue, um, but they have these nice black uh, highlights to go with. And I thought this would go well in the base. So I had um, I had these columns set up where I had it like this, and then we had bits going up like uh, that, and it looked kind of cool on the corners. Um, but what I've got with this rustic stuff going on, we've kind of got this um, old timey feel going on a little bit. I know we've got uh, high-tech machines over here, um, but the feel of the build is, um, especially with the wooden storage things we've got going on, uh, it's it's a bit more rustic, so this looked slightly too high-tech for my liking. Um, and the other annoying thing is, is this quickly takes up a lot of inventory space if you don't manage it uh, while you're experimenting with the stones blocks. Um, I will just call it X stones for the sake of um, argument there. Uh, we've also replaced these uh, chests that were over here with um, small storage crates from Actually Additions. These have tons of storage space. That's like a that's like a triple chest right there in one block space, and they're also upgradable. Um, there is a way to so I've made these over here, um, or maybe I use them all. I think I've used them all. But basically, there's a crate upgrade. Um, so that will change a chest to a storage crate. It takes a small storage crate and four oak planks, which is very, very cheap considering you don't even have to take any of the inventory out. It just converts the chest straight into a crate. And then you can do small to medium, medium to large. And uh, this will give you a heck of a lot of storage, which is fantastic. Um, I'm just gonna leave the stones, X stones in there. Um, I wonder what other things do I have to show you? So we've now got this sawmill, which you can see the recipes here. It'll change one wood into six planks plus sawdust, and then the sawdust can be used. Um, we can get some sap and resin from it. Oh, if we put a resin funnel on this, we can get some more sap or resin from it, which uh, is what our uh, power supply is being generated from at the moment. With the sh That's pretty cool. Um, so maybe we stick a resin funnel on this. Um, I might talk about thermal expansion augments for machines in a later episode, but at the moment we don't really need them. Um, so this basically gets you a lot of wood um, from your logs using power. And then this sawdust, um, let's hit U. We can turn it into paper with some water. We can make phyto grow, which is um, basically like fertilizer. 
um, compressed sawdust uh, that turns into charcoal. So yeah, there's a lot of cool things you can do with the sawmill. Then I got the pulverizer redstone furnace. Uh, we've now filled up the basic drawer with gunpowder from our machine. So this is all gummed up now, but that's fine. Um, I don't think I'll ever use 2000 of this. And uh, we've actually <laughs> gotten rid of the revolver as my main weapon between episodes. Um, so the one last thing that I was going to show you is I've got this ethereal glass from X Utilities too. I spoke in an earlier episode about how I wanted to be um, like th the Thunderbirds when you could just fly out through the water pool. Um, so I've got that going. The ethereal glass lets you pass through it. Um, so I can just fly up and out of the base now, which is really, really cool. And the way I made that, so I've got these um, solar panels here from X Utilities too. I'll just show you the, there's lots of different solar panels in the pack, but uh, these are the Extra Utilities 2 ones. All it takes is lapis lazuli, uh, resonating redstone crystals you get from mining redstone ore, and then polished stone, which is just four stone bricks like that. Um, so these are really cheap. I made about 18 of them, and maybe I bring them all the way around. Um, there's also a um, inverse solar panel, which uh, will also generate you power at night. Um, so let's see if we can see that. Yeah, so it's this lunar panel, and that takes lunar reactive dust. Now, this resonator block from X Utilities 2, I know this is a lot of information to process, um, but I'll, I'll show you uh, very briefly how to make some lunar resonating crystals. Is that what they're called? Uh, lunar reactive dust. Yeah, there we go. Um, so I've got my resonator, and the recipe for this is a block of coal, two redstone, five iron ingots, and one of these resonating redstone crystals. Um, it's powered with this grid power which is generated from the solar panels and all you do is put your item that you want to convert into here It'll show you how long it's going to take. So that says 1 minute 20 seconds, although um, It's going a fair bit faster than that and uh, you can see in here all the different recipes that uh, You need so these are all things that you need to make the extra utilities to things as uh, so we got upgrade bases uh, wireless RF heating coils, redstone glass, not sure what that is, that sounds pretty interesting. Um, but essentially, yeah, that's how you get your lunar reactive dust. And uh, that's how you make the ethereal glass as well, you need this um, uh, ethereal, if I could spell. Um, so you need ethereal glass, this needs moonstone and a diamond, and then you put your eight lunar reactive dust around it, and then craft it uh, like you would stained glass, but with the moonstone instead. Um, so that's how I got that stuff. Very, very useful. And uh, we'll probably be getting into extra utilities too a bit more, um, but that's that's gonna come at a later stage. So the first thing I wanted to do this episode was a little bit of building on camera, and we're gonna sleep so that I can do this in peace without being bothered by mobs. Um, also, as you can see, I've upgraded my uh, Tinker tools. We're now using Cobalt and uh, a manulin for a lot of them so we've got this lightweight momentum stuff that just makes the tools a lot faster and uh, I basically rather than making brand new tools you can see the names are kind of the same bone to pick this is still the original bone pickaxe that we made back in episode 2 I think it was um, but it's now got a cobalt axe head and then this fatality it's got insatiable which is the manulin and it does a heck of a lot of damage it'll do 10 hearts um, nearly 11 hearts as well, and I think we can still put a bit of quartz on it. Um, but what I wanted to do here was set up a little bit of a wind farm um, to generate electricity. I've been getting into mechanism, and to supplement our little tree farm that we've got going on there, um, we want to do some uh, more renewable resources. So we don't want to be burning dirty old coal and fossil fuels and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to clear out a space here. As you can see, my uh, spade is very, very fast, and uh, we're just chewing through all this dirt. And I've got the materials in my bag to make a uh, wind farm. So this was already set up on my base between episodes, but I thought that's uh, kind of ugly. Uh, we can do better than that. So I've got here some marble, uh, maybe not enough marble. We've also got the slate, so this will match inside the base, and then uh, I was just going to place one of these down. So we've got five of them, and if we place them all in a row... Yeah, so we've got this kind of white stand. Uh, these are really pretty. Um, another benefit of mechanism. And uh, the white stand with the uh, grey base, so that's why I've chosen the slate and the marble. Sl marble is from chisel, and you can mine it uh, naturally. 
so we can make any one of these and I think we're gonna go with panel or big tile I think big tile since we're gonna be putting a border on it anyway so if I dig underneath here uh, we can put these all around and then I'm gonna see where we can put our leadstone flux ducts um, so can we put it underneath and will that draw power from it that is the question um, maybe it needs to be going into something yeah so it needs to be coming out the front so since we'll always be seeing it from this side uh, that's that's probably fine to be honest um, so we can just leave a bit of dirt underneath to save our resources and then let's put our marble in a ring around like that yeah I think that'll be just fine and then that's gonna need to go underneath into there and uh, what we can do oh there we go is in this uh, little gap behind here um, let's just see we've got uh, a little bit of a gap that we can expand later and uh, this will wrap around to all our machines I think they're just around the corner um, in the base uh, should be showing up any second I wow I really I made a big room here <laughs> yeah oh uh, well it's even bigger than I thought so yeah we need to wrap a cable all the way around to there um, I will do that off camera you don't need to see that um, just be using these leadstone flux ducts to bring that in there and then I want to dig up here um, using my jetpack to fly up that's very useful and then ah we're right next to it sweet and um, so we can basically just have all the cables from the wind farms and hook that up um, let's make half a stack of these hook that up um, underneath and then bring it down uh, so it meets the machines under the ground um, so that's that's pretty nice uh, what's the next thing we need to do so we need to make a nice border and uh, I'm gonna bring the marvel out a little bit more so it's more like a uh, more like a ring and uh, that's going to look pretty nice for us. So I wonder, should I have all the sections connected or put a border between each? I think we're going to end up with too much going on there if we put a border between each. Um, so basically, if I have this coming along and then chew out the outside here. Oh, I love having an instant mine pickaxe or spade. Yes, so this is what I'm talking about here is I don't really want the border to come along so if we just have this front border and then we space them out maybe two apart I think that would be good enough so let's have this come along and see how this looks with them side by side no they're kind of overlapping so I think three apart is going to be the way to go yeah and so the the reason that these guys don't stack is because they all keep their par so this says 200 kilojoules and uh, so you don't lose any power when you're mining them and I think that that distance apart looks good um, so how's that look from like down here yeah that that'll be just fine and uh, another reason for putting them up there on top of the hill as opposed to on top of the house is uh, firstly they make a lot of noise you can kind of hear them blowing in the wind a little bit uh, I've got the signs turned down for this um, but also they get more uh, power generation if you put them at a higher altitude. Obviously I can't put them away up over there because then the cables running down are just going to get ridiculous. Um, but yeah, they, they look good and they're generating a fair bit of electricity up here. And I'm going to replace the block underneath there just because you will be able to see that yeah, coming down. And then we're going to want to put one of these in here. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish building this off camera and I'll join you when I got a little bit of progress. Well then, we've completed the wind farm and I just wanted to craft up some of those lunar panels because I realized that uh, if we wanted to be doing any kind of actually addition stuff, or not, not actually additions, um, oh, we're missing a lunar reactive dust. Uh, that's because I made one earlier, for examples. There we go. I wanted to conserve resources. And uh, so I don't think we actually had enough of those uh, redstone resonance dusts uh, so I'm going to show you how to make one um, I have ender pearls and you can split those into oh. I think you might need a knife um, so let's see we want ender shards uh, ender shard 
Yeah, we need a glass cutter, which is iron, sticks, and here we go. Let's grab a stick. I made too many sticks earlier uh, for no good reason, so let's go ahead and craft this up. It was like that, and then we can split this into eight ender shards. Um, oh, oh, cool. It um, The icon in the inventory changes depending on how many you have. Uh, what happened the eighth? Uh, some we've been having like ghost issues with ghost items and crafting, uh, which is not very convenient. Uh, there we go. And um, in case you can't find any mining, because there's a two percent chance, I think by default, um, when you mine a redstone ore that you'll get one of these. You can craft them with Ender shards and for redstone. And um, so we'll be able to make more of these. And I'm going to place them up on the roof. Um, so we already made, I think, three and then I'm having this alternating pattern. Uh, so we will be producing as much grid par in the daytime as at night, which is pretty nice just to have that constant uh, supply of grid par coming in. Um, we can make those, uh, if you were familiar with all the mods too, we made an angel ring, which lets you have creative flight using grid par. So um, this is what this goes towards. And it looks like we get 20 at the moment. I think it's 45 or 30 for the angel ring. Um, but here we are, that's our wind farm, and um, the cabling, uh, it kind of went down here, so I had to fill in some bits with dirt, but I don't think it looks too bad. We might be able to replace this with stone just so we have this cavern feel. Uh, I think I'm going to keep this just so the pool looks like it's not out of place. Um, but here we have it, that was the design pattern I went for, and uh, we just have the leadstone flux ducts running in one block below the ground, uh, all the way across to here. Uh, so I don't think that looks too bad, and I think the combination of the marble and the slate is pretty good for the um, windmills. So let's have a look at those in the daytime. Uh, hopefully that zombie won't stop me from sleeping. And let's just have a quick peek at that. Um, so yeah, it looks it looks pretty good. Um, I think it's, it's going to be a semi-permanent feature, and it is free par after all, so we might as well keep it there. Um, the next thing I was going to do is I was I've been um, on the uh, all the mods subreddit and I saw someone uh, first off I had asked a question about remember in episode five we had the solar eclipse and that is apparently added by astral sorcery I'm going to kill this oh he's gone I was going to kill the enderman because we just used uh, half of our ender pearl supply on that one thing um, but the solar eclipse is added by astral sorcery I should have guessed that um, considering it's to do with the stars and uh, all that day-night cycle stuff. Um, but as well as that, um, there was a, a... This might have been on the Feed the Beast subreddit, if you're not on that, but there is a tips and tricks thread, and uh, this is what got me to actually record this episode, was I saw on there there was a uh, estimate of how many canola presses and fermenting barrels that you need for the uh, power generation in actually additions and um, so it, this is what I was using in uh, all the mods 2 was the actually additions uh, canola power so we had like crystallized canola seeds at the end of it and it was generating us tons and tons of power um, and I was using the farmers from actually additions as well uh, I don't know if that's here I assume it's in the mod pack um, but essentially I want this experience solidifier which requires empowered diamantine crystal blocks which sounds pretty complex so we need to make an empowerer and uh, make diamantine crystals which needs these um, oh my goodness there's so many steps to it and there is a book that tells you all how to do it and if you're not familiar with a mod um, there's also uh, houses in the village with uh, handy little examples of how these are all put together um, so maybe we actually fly there now and have a look since I'm not going to be able to set one up just yet. We'll show it there and then uh, we'll fly back. So I can demonstrate everything that we need to do just from in here. Oh, and I also want to snag that. Uh, that's got some palace crystals which are the lapis um, atomically reconstructed versions. Um, so we can kind of ignore the energy relay. Um, this is just uh, one way of doing the power source. We're going to be using leadstone flux ducts. Um, but essentially what happens here is we have the atomic reconstructor and we can pick these up. Um, the way these houses are made, they destroy the items if you try and break them. 
Um, so we've got the atomic reconstructor, it's got power in it. If we hit the button, supply a redstone pulse to it, it'll fire the laser and turn the coal block into a void crystal block. So that's these things. And uh, this will work if we put any other kind of um, vanilla, we've got the iron, emerald, coal, diamond, and lapis, and redstone. Uh, can't forget redstone. And so all those can be converted and then we can change them to the second phase, which is what we need for the experience solidifier, which will let us keep our levels. I had 57 levels before. I did some enchanting, got some books done, um, but we can store all that just in case we die inside an experience solidifier. Um, so I want to do that. And uh, that's, that's why I'm making these things. Oh, uh, zombie, we don't want you about. We don't want your kind in the village. Oh, and I got his head, nice. I think this has beheading on this. Yeah, beheading too. Don't know what material gave us that, but it's there and it's kind of nice. Um, we can make Valentine's blocks from chisel. Interesting. And there's also some curses we can make with that. Ah, interesting. Well, so that's the basic setup. So we're going to have to make the atomic reconstructor. And uh, we're also going to be making the power supply with the canola. Um, so the recommendation from this post, which is tips and tricks, week of September 3rd, 2017, uh, currently pinned on the Feed the Beast subreddit, uh, the top post, which has uh, 17 upvotes, says you can make um, three canola presses, which supply exactly 10 fermenting barrels that supply exactly 16 oil generators. So we're going to want to make that um, set up and then have a way of growing the uh, canola. And uh, I think I'm going to go with the Garden Cloche from uh, Immersive Engineering. And to make this, we're going to need this Engineer's Blueprint with wire. And I'm thinking of making Metal Press, but we might leave that for next time. Um, so these things are basically a one uh, multi-block structure farm where you can put fertilizer in, water in, par in, and it'll grow things for you. So we're going to get our canola that way. And uh, we can attach uh, conveyor belts to that, and it's going to look really, really cool. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make some of these things. Maybe put them in that second floor, um, second basement floor of the base. And uh, we'll see if we can get any kind of automation done with that before the end of the episode. Okay, then. I think I've got all the stuff we need to make our... Uh, what is it called? Experience solidifier. That's the one. And uh, I've cleared out a little bit more down here and starting to work out a bit of a shape, which I'm really liking. So we've got this central circle and then I was going to have it come out in the semicircle. And I thought, no, let's have four smaller circles. So we're going to have like um, a pretty big space to play around with down here, which is what I'm looking for because uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to put down here. So better safe than sorry. So this is the empowering station. Um, so we have our empower. And I've just noticed that we kind of need a lot more diamonds for what I want to do right now. Um, so I'm actually going to talk through the canola system first. Uh, so as we saw on the post before, we needed three of these canola presses. These take canola and turn it into canola oil, which is this yellow stuff. And um, we're not actually getting enough canola, so I'm going to have to expand the garden cloche. Uh, collection later um, but essentially we're getting the canola it's being fed into fermenting barrels through these transfer nodes um, the reason I have the transfer nodes as opposed to the fluid ducts is because we were getting the um, fermented canola oil coming back out which then stopped the oil from coming um, out of these so the whole system got jammed up so this uh, transfer node um, from extra utilities um, it's very cheap to make. You need the transfer node, uh, buckets, uh, stone, redstone, and then the transfer pipes, which is just stone slabs, glass, and more redstone. You get 64, which is very, very generous. Um, so I do like these transfer pipes. We used them before in all the mods too. Um, but I also like the fluid ducts because you can see what's inside them, which is actually how I worked out what was going wrong. Um, so we have the canola. It's made in the garden cloche, which you feed in water into one input. Um, then you put some dirt in the bottom, some canola seeds on the top, and then the output will come out through this um, upper exit. Um, so it goes into the item duct, then we're putting the seeds into the basic drawer. 
this uh, item duct goes all the way around to these and the power is coming from the ceiling but it's also being generated over here too now so we've got uh, way 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 more power than we will ever need for the moment and we can even upgrade this system later but we'll touch on that probably in another episode and um, so we've got water We've got the output, we've got the power in, and then we've got dirt and seeds. So this kind of looks scary at first, but it's actually super easy. And then you can put bone meal in here. Um, I can do that now. Um, so this gives us a growth modifier, and I think it mixes with the water. Um, but the fertilizer, this will um, decrease until zero, and then it'll use up the bone meal. And uh, that will increase our grow speed. So we're actually, you can see it grow, it uh, goes pretty quick, um, but I'm conscious of time here, so we're gonna go and move on. Um, so these need uh, power as well as the uh, canola seeds to go in, and then it's a liquid output into these, which have a liquid output. Um, then we can follow these around. Um, this is the fermented canola oil, and that is going into our oil generators. Um, the recipes for all of these can be found in the Oh, it's a lightning storm out there. Uh, oil generator, very, very cheap. Just iron casings, cobblestone, and canola. Iron casing is black quartz, which you can mine in the overworld. Iron ingots and sticks, very cheap. Um, so 16 of these, and apparently that is the best ratio. So all we need to do is up our canola production, either through fertilizer or making an extra garden cloche or two. Garden cloche, also quite a cheap block to make. Uh, it's just glass-treated wood, which is... Um, you can make treated wood with um, planks all around and then the, oh, what you call it? It's, it's some form of oil that we get from the, uh, I can't remember any words now. We're actually gonna have to go up and look. Um, so it's this, no, it's this, Coke oven. It's creosote oil, which uh, gives us coal to coal coke and creosote oil. And then you can make the the treated with planks out of that, sorry. Um, I'm trying to think of too many things at once. And uh, then we got our par, and that's going through the flux ducts, and it's going back into the system. Um, so we have very good power generation in our world at the moment, and everything is all hooked up to one. Uh, that's two extra power stations I've kind of built this episode. Um, so the idea with this empower is we can make the uh, Empowered diamatine, which we need for our uh, experience thingy, and uh, we're going to need two of these diamatine uh, crystal blocks. And for that, we're going to take some diamonds, which I have in storage. I thought we were only doing two, so I got two diamonds, but actually, we're going to need um, two diamond blocks. And darn it, we only have enough for one, um, but that's okay. I can go. I can do one on camera and then finish the rest off later. You get the picture. And um, so with this. We want to go to our atomic reconstructor, which just takes power. Um, I right click this with a redstone torch. Let's see if we have one on us. Yeah, so I can do redstone torch, that changes it to deactivation, and that means that it'll just keep going. But if we change it to pulse, it'll only power whenever we press the button. Um, so we can either place the diamond block down, or we can do it as an item. So we saw the coal as a block earlier. Let's do this as an item. So that gives us our diamantine crystal block, and then we can empower that, um, which is half of the things we need to craft the experience solidifier. I remembered the name for it this time. Uh, so here we go. Uh, we need two clay. We need a clay block and a light blue dye. And then uh, what do you do to activate it? And these all have uh, redstone flux in them? Oh no, this one doesn't. Ah, that would be the issue. Uh, find it. <laughs> Just do a little bit of troubleshooting. Um, so there we go, and that starts empowering now. Very good. Um, I will make this place look a bit prettier between episodes. I don't think I need to do that on camera. Um, it's just the technical stuff that you guys would be interested in, since I'm probably going to be building in the same style as over there. Um, so this will drain the power out of these, and uh, it takes a wee minute here. Um, but you get the picture. So that's going to turn into an empowered diamantine block. Yep, there we go. And uh, we're going to use that to make the experience solidifier, but I will do that off camera and uh, I'll show that machine off to you in the next episode. But that's all we've got time for today. Thank you very much for watching as always. Um, I've got a bit of work to do here building in our world. 
and uh, I won't do any more uh, machines and stuff off camera. Um, but that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye bye.